A very good afternoon. Um, I'm Praveen from Christian Medical College, Vellore, uh, and I would like to present our work on prevalence, etiology, and follow-up of low neonatal TSH uh, in our uh, center. So since July 2001, all babies born at our institution are screened for uh, primary congenital hypothyroidism using cord TSH. Many babies born uh, in, the, in, the, in the newborn screening are incidentally noticed to have low TSH levels. While there is a lot of literature on etiology and follow-up of babies with high TSH in the context of congenital hypothyroidism, there's very little literature on the etiology on manage and management of babies with low neonatal TSH levels. So we aim to look at the profile of babies born with low cord TSH levels during the study period. So all babies born between January 2013 and July 2019 with the cord TSH value of less than 1 were recalled for repeat thyroid function testing. The results were analyzed to see 1 if the thyroid function test is, has normalized and if this TSH is low to assess the biochemical profile, repeat the test periodically when indicated and correlate with clinical features such as growth and development. As far as possible, we tried to ascertain an etiological diagnosis and this value of 1 was arrived on the basis of a written, uh, recent reported article which reported 1 to be on the 10th centile of healthy newborns. So going on to the results, over this study period, a total of 91,000 babies were screened of which cord TSH of less than 1 was seen in 106 babies. 92 babies had repeat thyroid function testing done and 14 babies uh, had, had no repeat thyroid function testing of which 12 were lost to follow up and 2 babies had expired in the newborn period. Now going on to the uh, results, the mean birth weight in our uh, cohort was 2.8 kgs, the mean gestational age was 38 weeks and the mean age at which repeat testing was done was 12 days. Now as you can see fr uh, from this slide, of the 92 babies who continued to had, uh, uh, who had uh, low TSH and were followed up, 45 babies continued to have low TSH uh, levels and 47 babies, sorry, 45 babies had normal TS uh, on repeat uh, testing, 45 babies had TSH which normalized and 47 babies had TSH which remained low. I should mention here that of these uh, babies who had TSH which normalized, 40 of them actually normalized by the end of the neonatal period. Now in those babies in whom the TSH uh, remained low beyond the neonatal period, an etiological diagnosis was obtained in 15 babies. The etiological diagnosis that uh, we found in these babies were 5 babies had central hypothyroidism, 6 babies had neonatal Graves disease and 4 babies had probable DIDNAS3 deficiency which was diagnosed on the basis of a low level of TSH. Uh, normal T4 and free T4 levels with high levels of total T3. And of these babies who had central hypothyroidism, two babies had isolated central hypothyroidism, one baby had multiple pituitary hormone deficiency and two babies were born to mothers with Graves disease. Now of the 32 babies who continued to have low TSH with no etiological diagnosis, 4 babies have been followed up beyond 2 years and they, their TSH remains low and 28 babies have been followed up for a period of less than 2 years. Now using this data, we tried to arrive at predictive cutoff points based on the first repeat TSH and free T4 sampling. So we found that a TSH level, a free T4, a repeat free T4 level of less than 0.7 was able to predict central hypothyroidism with a positive predictive value of 87.5%. We also found that a repeat TSH level of less than 0.007 had a very high negative predictive value for DIDNAS3 deficiency, which means that if the repeat TSH was more than 0.007, you're very unlikely to have a baby with probable DIDNAS3 deficiency. However, we could not uh, arrive at any other uh, predictive uh, values or for other cutoff intervals that were tried. We also found that the birth weight 
in babies with central hypothyroidism was significantly lower than the rest of the cohort as you can see 1.92 against 2.9 kgs in the rest of the cohort however we did not find any significant difference in the weight or the gestational age between the groups of babies in whom the tsh normalized and did not normalize so in conclusion of the 92 babies uh, with low tsh level detected during the no uh, newborn period and were followed up 51% of them continued to have low tsh beyond the neonatal period and an etiological diagnosis was obtained in 16% of these babies a free t4 level of less than 0.7 in repeat testing is a useful parameter to predict central hypothyroidism and a tsh level of more than 0.007 on repeat testing may help to rule out t uh, dinas 3 deficiency and there is a strong association between birth weight and central hypothyroidism in this cohort so in those babies who continue to have low tsh with no etiological diagnosis the possible etiologies could be a tsh receptor gene activating mutation which can be autosomal dominant or sporadic the autosomal dominant uh, having a much more milder phenotype mccune albright syndrome thyroid hormone receptor alpha mutation which was described very recently where they have a clinical phenotype of babies with low tsh levels normal t4 and ft4 with higher levels of t3 with a clinical phenotype of baby having constipation growth retardation and skeletal dysplasia like picture rarely you can have iodine induced hyperthyroidism and the use of biotin which may interfere with the tsh assay so what this study adds is that it sheds light on this less recognized entity of babies with persistently low tsh with normal t4 and free t4 concentrations and these babies are developmentally normal and doing well in terms of growth to the extent which we followed up The most common etiology in our cohort was neonatal graves followed by central hypothyroidism and probable dinas 3 deficiency and there is very limited data regard regarding the long term follow up of these babies who had low tsh levels we believe that genetic studies could be a valuable tool in bridging this gap and diagnose and getting to the etiological diagnosis of these babies